<coughs> Some years go by and all those 1.2 million people over 20 die except for two. Actually, there were, I guess, three of them left by then. Joshua, Caleb, and Moses. <coughs> and um, God told Moses to go up to a mountain called Nebo. He said, Moses, come here, I want to show you something. I want to show you the promised land. And he looks, and as far as he could see, the promised land of God. He said, Moses, you know what? You see it? Yeah. He said, you can't go there. Have you ever thought that God showed you something and told you you couldn't have it? Yeah. We've all been there, haven't we? God did something. I don't know what kind of death. I don't know. Maybe he fell asleep and died. But God buried him on that mountain. You had something different planned for Elijah. But what God was telling Elijah, he told him, I got some things I want you to list of things to do. And we don't even know if he even did them, but we think his successor, Elisha, did them. He was supposed to anoint some people as kings. He was supposed to do this, do that, set up a prophecy school, and all that. But what God essentially did was put him on the shelf. And he got him a successor and sent a chariot down and took him to heaven. You see, it's like God told Moses and Elijah, y'all forgot something. Y'all aren't in charge. We're not in charge. Philip's not in charge. Kenneth's not in charge. My wife's in charge except... <laughs> now she's told me how to get my pants on. She's in charge. I'm not in charge, and you're not in charge, and she's not in charge. God is in charge. And everything He does is for His glory. Now, if the story ended there, it would be a sad story, wouldn't it? Because God can put us on the shelf, too. Any day when he gets ready to. Well, one day, Moses and Elijah, they're up in heaven. And God called them and said, Come here, come here, you two. I got something for you to do. Remember, Moses was Mount Nebo. Elijah was on Mount Horeb. And put their ministry on the shelf. He said, come here, you see, i got something for you to do. He said, you see that mountain down there? I want you to go down there and look into the face of that man. Luke 9. About eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up onto the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah. That's where God sent these two men who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. And as the vision uh, ends, a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. As much as we're chosen, we're chosen in Christ. Okay? There's nothing in us that God would cause God to choose us for anything. But because of grace, unconditionally, He pulls people out of hell and saves them. So here we are. It's not the end. Moses and Elijah come down there and they look into the face of their Savior. They look into the face of Carrie Brecht's Savior. They look into the face of your Savior. 
and what Elijah had told God, I'm the only one you have withheld revival. And, and God told him when he sent him down there, when you get down there, you're going to see something. And when Elijah looked in that face, he saw that God had bigger plans than just saving northern Israel. His plan was to save people from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Men, women, children, boys and girls from all over the world. Anybody that would come to Him can drink of the life of, of God in Christ without cost. It doesn't cost anything to come to Christ. Elijah, you wanted revival? Here it is. You want revival? It's in Christ. It's not in us. It's not in what we do. Do not underestimate God. He absolutely cares about each and every one that call Him Lord. It's not how good you are. It's beholding Him. You know, what I want to do is when I get to heaven, I want to walk up to Elijah and ask him, what did you say to Jesus that day on the Mount Transfiguration? Wouldn't you like to know? I would. He saw in Jesus more than anything he could ever think to even ask for. <laughs> and it's yours. You see, God didn't save us to make us better. He does do that. He saved us to make, him, make us His. We belong to Him. We don't belong to the world out there anymore. This is the God that we serve. Your life is not cheap. Did you know it cost the life of the Son of God to save you? It cost the life of the Son of God to save me and Philip and Teresa and Kenneth and each and every one. Even Mark took the life. Even a, a baby that, quote, has never done anything, it takes just as much to save that baby, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ, as it does to save the vilest wretch. This Jesus is for anybody who will call on His name. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. That promise is to you, Philip, to you, Kenneth, to you, Teresa, to you, Mark, and to each and every one of the rest of you that will come to Him and to me, even me. Paul said he was chief of sinners. He's not I am. If you confess and believe, He will save you. It doesn't cost anything. This is the important thing. Peter, later, is writing, and he said this. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm not going to quote it word for word, but he said... We were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Who's He talking about? Peter, James, and John, Elijah, and Moses. They saw the majesty of Jesus Christ that day on the Mount of Transfiguration. But He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. This is more important than what they saw. This is the Word of God. Just as if Jesus was standing here reading it to you. This is the Word of God. And this is your heritage. This is your inheritance. This is... Some people say it's your rule book. It's not a rule book. It's your last will and testament. That you are heirs of the world. That's what this is. It's the promises of God and they've never been broken. You know, you can have a strong faith you can have a weak faith. It doesn't matter as long as your faith is in Christ. 
Maybe one day you've got strong faith. The next day, maybe not so strong. And maybe it gets to almost to the breaking point. But as long as you behold Christ, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, we behold Him. And the Spirit gives us power. If the ministry of death, how many of you know what the ministry of death is? It's on stone tablets. What is, what is the ministry of death? Ten the Ten Commandments. <laughs> if it had glory, and it's a glory that's fading away, and Christ, through His Spirit, as you look on Him face to face, you see, this face to face was not just for Moses and Elijah, for you too. Look at Him face to face. Behold Him as Kerry Brooks says. And be saved. Isaiah 45, 22. This is a Spurgeon verse. He was converted one night in a God he was usually went to a Baptist church. He went one night because the storm was so bad to a little Methodist church. They didn't have a preacher that night. They had this little layman get up there and uh, said, Look unto Christ all the ends of the earth and be saved, for he is God. And there's no one else like Him. That's the God we will worship. And He's for you and me and everyone that will come. Okay, guys, this is our time. This, we're doing something different. Now. We've never done this before. Hmm? Okay. This is live and unrehearsed. We're going to sing a song. Yeah. Um, he's going to sing alto, I'm going to sing baritone, and you're going to sing what, by letter? Yeah. By letter? Oh, we're letter, letter plot. <laughs> we got to dial in. we got to call up our pianist. Mary's got to hook it up. Hook it up. And uh, if this is, isn't any good, uh, show some grace, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we love y'all. Spring chorus. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll, you'll recognize the tune to this, uh, but the words might be, are going to be somewhat different. We are waiting on you, sir. If you're waiting on us, you're back in the room. Nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survives, unless the Lord does raise the house in vain. This builder strives to you who boast tomorrow.